So the game I'm playing today is called Jetstream. We are back with yet another quote-unquote relaxing puzzle game, except unlike COGS, this is a fairly recent one. This came out on Steam a couple of months ago, even though it's based on a completely different game that came out back in 2015. But we'll get to that in just a minute. So Jetstream is a puzzle game where you control an airplane. You, the player, acting as the pilot for said airplane, need to guide it to its destination. However, that does not come without its challenges, as you will have to avoid thunderstorms, leap through interdimensional portals, you even have to transform into a van in some levels. Needless to say, the flights get pretty weird at times. Now, this is a Sokoban-esque puzzler, but it has an element of eccentricity to it that definitely makes it stand out amongst other Sokoban puzzlers of its kind. I'll get to all of those details in just a bit, but first of all, the history of this game. Jetstream originally began its life as a small prototype called Streamline. Streamline was originally developed for the Ludum Dare 34 competition back in 2015, and out of the 1,200 games that were entered into Ludum Dare 34, Jetstream scored fairly high. It came in fourth place in the so-called fun category, and it placed eighth overall. It was one of the standout games from Ludum Dare at the time. After a couple years had passed, the developers decided to take it upon themselves to turn Streamline into a fully-fledged game. Development on the current version of Streamline, which of course was later renamed to Jetstream, began in 2017. And after a couple more years had passed, the game finally saw a release currently on PC only in April of 2019. And by the way, when I say PC only, what I really mean is that it's only available to play on computers. You know, desktop computers, that being PC, Mac, and Linux. I did find out that there are official Mac and Linux versions of this game as well. I do find it kind of weird though how this game is only available on PC at the moment, because when you look at the game, it clearly looks like it was designed with mobile gaming in Mayan. I mean, one of the screens that appears when you start up the game for the first time, it shows a hand making a swiping motion. So I find it kind of strange how they decided to release a PC version first, but the iOS and Android versions are still not available, but apparently they will become available later on in the year, but there is no solid release date for them yet, and that's according to the developers themselves. I don't know, I just think that's a little bit strange, but we are going to begin the game here now now, because there's not really anything else I wish to preface this video with. There's not really that much to talk about regarding this game's history. So I have completed quite a few of the levels off screen already. I do like this though, because uh, all of the levels, or at the very least all of the level icons on the level select screen right here, they're all in the form of stamps. And what's interesting about these little stamps is that you can actually see a small preview of the level in the center of the stamp. I'll try and go over here here just to show you uh, a level that I haven't completed yet, or maybe even a few. So if you look very closely, that image looks very blurred out, but that is actually a preview of the level you're about to click on. What's also really neat about this too is that whenever you complete a level, there's a little mark that gets added to it. So I like the design here quite a bit, but we are going to go to the first level here. Thankfully, this is one of those games where you can revisit levels that you've already completed. Yeah, look at this hand, for goodness sakes. It's making swiping motions. But keep in mind that this game is not available on mobile devices yet. I just think that's kind of bizarre, man, but anyway... So, yeah, it's saying that you can use the arrow keys to move around, and as far as I know, those are the only controls. Okay, actually, no, those aren't the only controls, because you can use WASND as well. Good to know. Always nice when it gives you that option. So, I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. Up arrow key allows you to move upwards. Down arrow key allows you to move downwards. Left arrow key allows you to move left. And right arrow key allows you to move right. Yeah, it's extremely self-explanatory. No reason to talk about this any further. Well, I can talk about this, though. Uh, if you think that you've screwed up royally, you can press Z to undo your move. Alternatively, you can actually just press the down arrow key, or the left arrow key, depending on which direction you headed in. You can also undo your move that way. I don't know if there is a hotkey to restart the level altogether, but I do know 
that if you're in your starting position and then you press the Z key again, it does actually reset the level completely, but I don't really see the point in doing that because you're already back at your starting position anyway. These clouds you can bump into, as you can see. These clouds act as solid objects, which makes absolutely no sense given the context of this game. And also, you don't move one tile at a time, you actually just keep on moving until you run into an object that is blocking your path. In this case, the clouds. So it's not quite like a Sokoban puzzler in that regard. You just keep on moving until you collide with an object. You move in a straight line. Your jet also leaves behind a trail here, as you can see. And we will talk about that trail in just a little bit. But right now, we just need to get to our destination. Yeah, that little marker that you see right there, we have to get to it. Gotta get to that marker, and then a bunch of fireworks will explode. It'll tell us that we did a good job or whatever, and then the level will end. The level will end, and then we'll move on to the next next level. So I do want to show this right here. So as you're moving around, your jet leaves behind a trail. As you can see, your trail also behaves like a solid object. So when you leave a trail behind, you can't cross over it. So what you have to do is that you have to make sure that you're moving around all of these tiles in a very specific, uh, like a very specific direction, or you have to try and make very specific moves so that way you don't end up uh, colliding with your own trail right here because the trail doesn't disappear. There are ways to make it disappear in the later levels, but we're not going to talk about that right now. So just keep this in mind, you can't cross over your own trail. The path that you leave will stay there permanently, at least in the early levels. So for now, yeah, we just need to just need to go to the next level. But just remember that, because that will be extremely important in the later levels. These first few levels, again, they just kind of act like tutorial levels. It's just showing that you can bounce off of these clouds right here. You can also kind of do this, where you can just sort of spam it, and then you can make the clouds do weird things like this. Not useful in the slightest, but it's a feature. So... Who cares? Yeah, who cares about useless features? Well, I do, apparently. I do like how the water animates, though. So, I believe we have to go up here. This is one of these levels where we can actually use the, our own trail to our advantage, because we can use it as a solid object, we can just bounce off of it in order to get to our destination. This game is not particularly long, it has about 100 levels, and the first, like, third of this game is fairly straightforward. We are getting introduced to a new feature right here, which are compasses, or an additional feature, I guess. Also, I don't really know why this game seems to be lagging so badly right now. I don't know, it kind of seems like this game might have performance issues, like very slight performance issues, but doesn't make it unplayable. So these compasses right here, your play-in will stop on these compasses. So normally if the compass wasn't here, we would just move all the way to the right, over to these clouds, but there's a compass in the middle of this island, so we stop on top of it. What we can then do is that we can reorient ourselves to go up this way and then turn to the right to get to our destination. In this level, we have just, well, another compass. We can stop right here. I think we're gonna want to not do what I'm actually thinking about doing. No, because that's just gonna get us stuck. I think what we want to do is also not do that, because that also gets us boned as well. Actually, we want to go downwards. There we are. That way we don't end up trapping ourselves. I mean, it, technically we're never really trapped anyway, because we can just undo all our moves. Right, so we have another feature right here, which are gas stations, or at least it looks like that. So these gas stations, you move over them, and they remove your trail. They remove your trail, so that way your trail is not blocking you off from your destination, so you can still get to it. There we go. Completely intact. Some of these levels do require you to move around the tiles a lot, so this will definitely, uh come in handy later on. I'm pretty sure there are some levels, though, where flying through the gas stations is not actually required at all. Like, there are ways you can beat certain levels by not having to fly through the gas stations. It does appear as though some of these levels actually have multiple solutions. We also get introduced to another feature here. These are thunderstorm clouds, and we have little lightning bolts coming down from them as well. You fly into them, and you die instantly. <laughs> yeah, your plane just gets electrocuted. You can't move out of that, so you're just completely stuck, you have to get out of there. Yeah, so none of that's gonna work, so we just fly around it. We just fly around that garbage. We have thunderstorms and a compass, and also some of these levels do have different sizes as well. The actual size of a lot of these levels varies too. 
I don't think it's really dependent on anything, like the, the size of the levels I mean. Well, actually, I do think it is dependent on something. I think the last few levels are usually the largest ones, and therefore the most complex. I think that's how this works anyway. I'm gonna not want to do what I'm doing right here, actually. This is not where I want to go. I think I want to move over this way. Move over this way, go down here. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's okay. Oh god, maybe it's not. Wait, go go back the other way. Oh, uh, no, that's not it. Yeah, see, the only problem is that the gas stations don't actually stop you from moving. You refuel and then you just keep on trucking, or keep on flying in this case. So what I am doing right here is definitely not what we want to do at all. Yeah, because if I, if I move like that, that's just gonna block me off. So I think what I would like to do instead is go down here, maybe? That's- no, that just leads me to the same situation I was in before. Go... not down there either. Oh god, how did I complete this again? I don't- I already don't remember. Oh wait, no, 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 no. I think we have to do this. We don't have to do that. We don't have to do that either. Ah, here we go. We have to go this direction. We have to refuel and then keep going to the right. So that way, we can get to our destination. Okay, very good indeed. God, we just started and I'm already forgetting the solutions to most of these levels. I don't think we want to keep moving this way because then I think there's- Actually, no, there are multiple ways we can move. But the other ways are just gonna get me stuck. So you know what? I'm gonna go up this way. Actually, I don't think I want to go up that way either. Or do I? No, I, I definitely want to. Yeah, see, this is one of those situations where you don't actually have to go to the gas station, because I'm pretty sure the gas station is actually a trap. Some of these obstacles are actually traps, I'm very certain. Like in the later levels. Because they try to bait you, they try to trick you into believing that the gas stations are actually important, when in reality they're not at all. At least in some levels, I mean, some levels in this game will definitely require you to fly through the gas stations, because that's the only way you can beat them. But other levels in this game, they just kind of troll you with them. Don't always try trust the gas stations in this game, okay? Because some of them are actual trolls. I'm gonna go down this way instead. Oh yeah, there we go. That's exactly how you do that. That is how you accomplish that task. Right, here's the final level of the first area. It's also weird too because the first two areas have 16 levels and then I think every area from that point onwards only has eight. Not sure why they designed the game like that, but I guess these first two areas are meant to be more or less tutorial areas. I'm already messing this up. Wait, I think I want to follow the... I, I think I want to follow the, the compasses. Maybe move over this way. No, that's not good. No, no god, that's not good. At, that's not good either. Wait a minute. I want to go here and then go over here. Use this as a wall. There we go, so I can refuel. And then I think I just want to do that. There we go. Just do that, and it'll lead you to victory. All right, so that's it for the check-in levels. Now we go to the next area, which is called Buckle Up. So this introduces you to what are uh, effectively boost pads. They just move you downwards, yeah. That will just move you downwards. This one will move you all the way to the left. But because you already have a trail there, you just get blocked off. It acts as a wall that you bounce off of, and you can still arrive at your destination fully intact. So I think what I might want to do is this... Yeah, that seems... No, that that's not correct at all. Wait a minute. Because I forgot there's another boost pad over there. So, I think go through this one. See, because that's at least going to block me off. See, and this one's not going to be able to push me back now because I have a trail there. So I can just uh, go all the way to the finish. Just like that. Alright, so this is where we get introduced to interdimensional portals. This is what I was talking about earlier. Purple portal. Fly through it. You wind up on the other side right there. And you just arrive at your destination. There we go. And some of these portals are also different colors, but as far as I know, the different colored portals don't actually have any, like, unique functions to them. Like the different colored portals, I- I don't know. I'm not sure why they have different colors to them, but I guess to try and, like, add variety to the design. But other than that, they all behave the exact same. I don't want to do this because this is just gonna throw me into the thunderstorm cloud. So I think what I'm gonna want to do instead is maybe this? Oh no. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I want to do, actually, because that's, again, that's still gonna throw me into a thunderstorm cloud on either side. So, I think we're gonna, we're gonna want to do this, actually. Yeah, there we go, just like that. Pretty simple stuff. Yeah, see, right here we have, like, a, a, a bluish-green portal, like a, like a teal portal, 
But again, I, I don't see what the difference is between the colors. They have different designs, but they all behave the same. I want to try and maybe not do this, because I think no. I think no. Maybe go through the gas station first, and then we'll wind up on this portal. Yeah, and then we get to the end. There we go. Uh, see, again, gas station being a troll. Because you have to fly through the gas station immediately, and not later on. I'm gonna die. There, I'm dead. Let's do this instead, then. I think... Like, that? Yeah, because that's just gonna block me off anyway. Nice. Yeah, because I think the only place that other boost pad would lead into is the thunderstorm cloud, so screw that noise. Screw that nonsense, boys. There we go. That- wow, that was like the easiest level in the entire game. What in the world? I don't know, I feel like this is another one of these instances where the, the levels sometimes feel a bit too easy. But they do get a lot harder later on. So just- just- just trust me on that, okay? Take my word for it. I'm not gonna be showing you guys the very late levels, because I still haven't managed to unlock them yet. My plan for this video was to show off at least the first four areas and then just be done with the video, and I think that is what I'm actually going to do anyway. So, we're just gonna show off the first four levels, and not only that, but I also don't want this video to be more than an hour long. I want to try and make my videos a little bit shorter. Try and make an effort into, uh, get- putting out some shorter videos which also means trying to play stuff that would take me a much lesser time to record. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna stop playing other types of games like real-time strategies or or even like beat-em-ups and whatnot or platformers, but it's just that I don't want my videos to be so damn long, man, because I have a really huge problem with that. I've been having a really huge problem with that recently with my videos, so just want to try and make them shorter. I've been getting kind of carried away with how lengthy my videos have gotten recently. I mean, look at my Sonic Adventure 2 video, for instance, or even my Creeper World 2 video. They're both over two hours in length, and it's, it's ridiculous. And I completely understand if you guys would not want to sit through all of that. I understand completely, because I'd rather not sit through all that nonsense either. I just want to try and make videos that are a lot shorter and maybe a little more digestible in terms of like commentary, like a bit easier to follow. I'm trying to come up with some tactics for for fixing the current like uh the current formula of my videos, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm trying to find ways to fix it guys. And by the way, that doesn't mean there's not going to be any more lengthy videos. It's just that maybe Maybe for the most part, we could have, like, much shorter videos, but maybe every now and again we could have, like, a special, like, two or three hour long gameplay video where I'm just... I, I don't even know. Just playing the game and trying to explain everything I possibly can about it. You know, there can be some occasions where we can have, like, a Creeper World 2 or Sonic Adventure 2-esque video where I'm just talking about all sorts of stuff pertaining to the game because I want to, and there's a lot of information I'd like to share with you guys, but maybe we can only have those videos occasionally from now on and not have every single video be like that. That's what I want to try and change with my content moving forward. Okay, I'm, I'm definitely going to want to use these portals for something. Like that. There's also an achievement you can get for, uh, for moving through every single possible tile on the map, which I have already completed, so it's not gonna even appear here anyway. Okay, this is actually- this- this level admittedly is a little bit tricky, because I don't remember how I did this at all. Oh dear boys! Oh wait, that's- that's it. Okay, well, never mind. Th that was not tricky. Okay, this one might actually be tricky, because look how many freaking portals there are. Oh, dear God. Which portal do I want to go through first? Purple, then blue. Actually, I think this is what I want to do. I did not mean for that to rhyme. That's definitely what I wanted to do. Okay. It actually came back to me, like, almost immediately. Okay, well, then there's more portals. This one is actually kind of confusing, though, like, legitimately, because I don't know where to go. Oh, boy. Well, that did block me off from the destination, so no, that's not what I want to do. This could be what I want to do, uh, yeah, okay. Well, uh, that was laughable. In all fairness, though, I've already played most of these levels, so I mean, it's not really that surprising that I already know the solutions to them. Alright, so now we're being introduced to keys. You can unlock clouds with keys in this game. Cause that makes a lot of sense. There we go, that's the first one done. Yeah, see, but the checkpoint levels only have eight levels this time. I guess because the complexity of these levels is actually starting to increase drastically now, so I mean, I, I guess it makes sense in that regard. There we go. That's fairly easy. Like I said, I'm not gonna play through this game in its entirety, cause to tell you guys the truth, we're already one-third of the way through this game. Yeah, we've already completed one-third of the entire game. Also, don't 
collect that key right there because that key is actually a trap. Some of these keys are also trolls. It's just good. Everything's trying to troll you in this game. It's absolutely fan fan freaking tastic. I think I want to go up this way. Never mind. That's that's a terrible idea. Why did I even think that? There we go. You don't even need to collect any of the keys because you don't want to because it'll it'll lead to your demise. That key you're gonna want to collect though because you're being blocked off from the exit by clouds. I think I want to go like this. Yes, that's definitely what I want to do. You want to go around, otherwise you're going to wind up going in like a spiral and trapping yourself. Don't remember if we want to collect that key yet. I don't believe we want to. We want to collect that key though, I think. And then move around like this. Nope, that's going to lead us into a thunderstorm. Oh wait, maybe like this. That's, no, that's going to lead us into the same thunderstorm. What, what about like this? Nope, that's just going to get us trapped. What about like this? See, again. Everything is just a troll in that level. The gas station and the key is. I feel like that key might actually be a troll as well, so no. You- you stay away from me. Well, actually, I'm completely blocked off, so no. You're- you're gonna have to- I'm gonna have to actually collect that key. Oh boy, okay, well, in that case, take you with me. Oh god, that's gonna get me trapped. Do I just have to go and collect this immediately? No, that's not it, because it's still gonna lead me into the thundercloud. Use this. Like, just bump off that, uh, unlockable cloud. Maybe go around? And, well, I can, but that's also gonna trap me. How about- oh wait, no, 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 I, th I think I see it. Go around like this. Like these. Yes, I think- yeah, there we go. Because it leads me back to the compass, and then I can- I can alter my trajectory. Big level right here with all sorts of unlockable clouds. I do believe this is another level where you have to just straight up avoid- the, uh, <laughs> avoid the key altogether, I think. Yes, you're definitely gonna need to avoid the key altogether, because now you can only fly into clouds. That ain't gonna work. This might work, though. Oh god. Maybe it won't. Maybe it will! Haha! -ha, there we are. Yeah, you collect the key at the very end, even though the key's not useful to you anymore. How about we go over this way? Maybe? Perhaps? Oh, that's not right. That's not correct at all. Okay, well, it's, uh, it does seem like we want to do something with that gas station, so how about do this, fly through that, uh, go back maybe the other way? Well, actually, no, this is how I got myself into danger in the first place, isn't it? Oh, never mind. It's not. All right, well, those are the checkpoint levels, so the last one I'm gonna show off here is layover. This will be the very last one here. All right, so these clouds. They will disappear and reappear every time you move. So you gotta time your movements correctly here. There we go. Yeah, so these clouds will disappear after a while. Uh, okay, no, that's just gonna trap me. I can't do that. There we go. Get out of my way, please. I bump into it and it disappears. The thunderstorm clouds are also capable of exhibiting this behavior in the later levels. I bump off you. Yeah, there we go. So then I can leave. As a matter of fact, we're gonna get introduced to that feature right now. So you have to find the correct path through this, and I think we want to go through here. Yeah, straight through the center. Start by going to the right, then move left, and then go straight through the center. It'll lead you straight to victory. Okay, this one's a little bit trickier, because I think you need to move through the compasses, and then you want to pick up the key? Yeah, because I think, I think that's going to trap you if you don't pick up the key. Yeah, there we are. This key I think we might want to avoid. Okay, this one, actually, no. No, no, no. Actually, I think, I think we do want to... Well, no, I'm pretty sure we don't want to collect this key, because we go through like this. There we go, to set up a little bit of a wall. Nice. And then we bounce off of this, I think, and then we go through like this. There we go, very nice. Again, another instance of a level where the keys are trolls. Actually, I think that's a solution I've never seen before, because I don't think I originally completed the level like that. Again, a lot of these levels have multiple solutions, so it's kind of like you have to find your own path through the chaos, essentially. Oh dear god, this is not what I want to do at all. Oh god, I messed it up. I messed it up so badly. I want to go over this way, I think. Do I- do I want to go over this way? I think I want to go around the other way. No, 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 that's not how that works. That's not how that works either. <laughs> Maybe go around like that? That's gonna fly me into a cloud. Okay, so what if I go up? All right. Well, I think that's the path I took before, but what if I go like 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 this? Okay, actually I think I think I see what I what I need to do here. I just want to take this path cuz I think I ha I have to go down like this, but okay, well actually all this is going to block me off. So wait, no. I want to stop on this compass right here 
so that way I give myself some some space to get out of this predicament. Oh wait, no. I'm not gonna be able to because of this boost pad right here. Oh god. Wait, I wanna create a wall here so I can get out. The only problem with this though is that I'm gonna be moved back up here. So, I don't believe that's what I want to do either. Oh, what if I move down the other way, like this? Oh, I see. I see what's happening here. Okay, wait a minute. Use you- there we go. Use you as- as a wall. When you reappear. And then I can fly out of here. Okay. Here's the last level of layover then. Oh dear god, all sorts of thunderstorm clouds. Just moving back and forth. Oh my goodness. Oh god, what am I doing right now? I think, I think, but probably not with my head, not with my cranium. Oh dear god, that's not gonna work. Also, I am hearing tapping on my windows right now, and I'm pretty sure it's like June bugs or something. It's kind of freaking me out though. What if I go over and... No, that's, that's a terrible decision. Why would you even think about doing that? What is wrong with you? <laughs> what if I go back down like this? Okay, well no, that's literally just what I did, come on. What if I go to the top compass first? Yeah, see, and then I can- I can leave through there. Yeah, and then you can't block me off. But then I think what I gotta do... ...is maybe go back through here? Perhaps? That kinda seems correct. I don't think it's correct, though. Or may- oh, maybe it is. Maybe it is. No, that's- that's not it. <laughs> that ain't it, Chief. Hang on a second. Okay, that is it, though. That's definitely it, Chief. Okay, well, there you go. That's it for the layover levels. I mean, if you want to get an idea as to what some of the air current levels are like, the ones where you have to push around the hot air balloons, well, here's one right here. This purple hot air balloon. You push it to the side. I do not understand how that even works at all. Yeah, but there you go. You get through it. Yeah, so this is where it kind of starts becoming like a Sokoban puzzler, because there are various balloons, hot air balloons, that you just have to move out of the way. Yeah, that- that red one down there you don't even have to do anything with, or that yellow one. What you gotta do with this one right here is that you just have to push it out of the way. Push it all the way to the top right-hand corner of the screen. You- you will notice, though, that the hot air balloon is affected by the, uh, by the boost pads as well. So they can indeed be pushed out of the way, and I- I think I remember how I solved this. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, like, push one of you into the thunderstorm clouds. There you go. Have to sacrifice you for the greater good. I have to push you into there. And I think I can actually leave? Can I? In one piece? Yeah, I can. I have to use them as barriers, essentially. Oh yeah, then you combine this with portals. They can indeed fly through the portals. I don't know if this is what I was supposed to do, though. Oh god, no, it's definitely not. I think what I gotta do is over- is go over this way. Go over this way. No, that's not what I gotta do. Oh yeah, here we go. I gotta go through the portal like that. Or, no, that's gonna push me down again. Actually, better idea. I'm gonna push you like this. Indeed. And then, I'm gonna bone myself again. I, I don't think I'm supposed to fly you into the... Into into the thunderstorm clouds, am I? Or, or I'm not supposed to push you into there. I don't believe... No, I'm not supposed to, actually. Because I'm supposed to go over that boost pad and then use my own- my own thing as a barrier. My own- my own trail. Okay, yeah, and then here's- here's a thing where you have to push a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of hot air balloons around and, uh, I- I don't know if I even want to play this one. Yeah, you know what? I, I- I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> See, and- and the reason why I- I'd rather not play through the entire game is because I- I talked about this before. I do kind of feel like it is unfair to the developers if I decide to do, like, a- a, a full playthrough of a game in just one video. Because I mentioned before that I don't feel like that really gives people a lot of incentive to actually go out and purchase the game themselves. Because, I mean, what's the point of playing the game when you can literally watch me play through the entire game? You get to see literally everything you possibly can, so then what's the point? That's not gonna give you any reason to spend your hard-earned money on this- on this great commercial product. That's also one of the reasons why I don't really do full playthroughs anymore, but I think for now, guys, I am going to, uh, stop it there. I at least showed you guys a few of the air current levels. If you want to see a few of the landing levels, I can give you an idea as to what, uh, as to what this, like, van driving feature is. Yeah, look at that. You can drive a van on land, and you can actually move just one tile at a time as well. It's pretty neat, but then when you get to the airport, you turn back into an airplane and you just fly away. Yeah, so there are some sections where you are, like, turning into a van, and you're just driving around on land right here, and it's- it's 
It's bizarre to say the least. I think I actually want to do this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, to get through this level. Congratulations. Congratulatory relations. And then this level, I think... Do I... No, I don't... Well, actually, I, I, don't, I don't think I have a choice but to get that key. Oh yeah, I, I have no choice at all. Because I have to unlock that cloud. Yeah, and then we combine this with the portals, and yes indeed, the van can drive through the portals as well. I think we want to go over this way, possibly, in order to get through here. I think. Oh god. That's not like that, though. What are we gonna want to do here? I think... Well, I mean, we can- we can do this. The problem is that I don't think we're supposed to do this. I could also try and complete this level just to show you guys how the game, like, uh, uh, applies a stamp to your stamp whenever you complete a level. Oh god, if I can actually figure out what the heck I'm supposed to do here. Uh, maybe configure this a little bit differently. Yeah, have that be a wall. Oh, there. Very nice. Okay, we got through it, actually. Neat. Oh, you can refuel at the gas stations here. Okay, yeah, the van can't actually get, uh, pushed into the thunderstorm cloud, because it can't- it can't drive over water. But yes, the refueling stations do work on the van as well. Oh god, am I gonna get- oh god, what is this now? Am I getting stuck in an infinite loop here? Wait, I got an achievement, Bermuda Triangle. What does that mean? Oh dear god, what does that mean? What does that mean? Does that- did I do a bad thing? Did I- did I commit a goof? Did I goof it up again? Oh god. Well, that's gonna just push me into the cloud. Okay, well, at least this one appears to give you multiple chances. So that's neat, at least. Oh dear god. What is happening right now? Here, I have a feeling that I actually have to, like, block something off, but I'm not quite sure what exactly. Well, hang on a second. I can fly through here. That does work. Yeah, because I, I forgot that there's there's water right here, but the water's not going to affect me. Not when I'm a playing. Oh, I see. R key restarts the entire level. I get it. Okay. So there is a way to actually restart it then. Damn, look at this monster burnout right here. Wait, I think I might have... I definitely did. Okay. Again, I'm pretty sure the gas stations were trolling me, because I think I had to go around them for the most part. I had to avoid them. Or something of the sort. I have no freaking clue. Hey, we have a key here. Go pick up the key with the van. What in the world? Is that literally it? <laughs> Was that actually the whole level? Come on, dude. This is some really inconsistent difficulty right here. We actually did unlock turbulence. Yeah, there's our stamps. Yeah. Oh, this one has 16 levels, though. I see. I think this introduces us to, to the concept of fans, right? Yeah, there are some thunderstorm clouds that are gonna- that are gonna start popping up. Like, uh, over time as we continue making more turns, or using up more turns. But is that the- is that the only thing? Like, let me go to level 16. Yeah, so, some- some of these levels also have fans that allow you to- to just, uh, blow the thunderstorm clouds away. See, as they're- as they're beginning to form. Well, actually, do they just stay away for good? Huh, it kind of seems like they do, actually. Okay, well, I do believe I am done other than that guy is, because I don't really feel like uh, playing this any much further. Yeah, like, I, I don't feel like playing this any longer. Oh, this is where we get introduced to it, I see. Oh, good god. Well, how long can I make this go, I wonder? I have no idea, but I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna stick around to try it. Yeah, okay. It does seem like it just removes them permanently, and then we can move on. Oh my god, it's combining it with the- with the clocks? Oh, jeez. I'm not sure if that gets rid of the- okay, no, that definitely doesn't get rid of that storm cloud. Oh wait, I think I need to go around like this. Okay, yeah, that seems correct, though. That seems correct. It was definitely correct. Okay, well, either way, guys, I am going to stop this video here. Oh my god, why are there portals? Wait, I just want to see if I can figure this crap out. Oh, come on. It blocks off the portal. Okay, well, I'll go over here, and then maybe over here, and then- wait, where is this gonna take me? Oh, I see, the portal doesn't even work because it's blocked off. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Oh, okay, well, I just blocked that off. Alright, good, screw my existence then. Okay, yeah, I'm going to- I'm not gonna quit the entire game, but I am done for now, guys. Yeah. We're- we're gonna wrap things up here for now, because I don't feel like playing this game any further. I don't want to show off everything that this game has to offer. If you want to see the remainder of the levels, go purchase the game for yourself and play it. Alright, so go to the credits while I'm ending this video off. So that's Jetstream. Really nice little relaxing puzzle game. Yeah, look at this, man. Completed 65 out of 100 levels. We're already, like, two-thirds of the way through the game. I think it's a good time to just freaking stop for now. Yeah, by the way, uh, Clockwork Acorn is the indie studio 
that developed this game. It was not published by them, though. It was published by a studio called Noodle Cake. Noodle Cake are not a fairly well-known developer, aside from the fact that they have about 25,000 subscribers on YouTube, but they only published one game, or one other game, at least one other game that's available on Steam. And much like Jetstream, that other game is also not very well-known. In fact, I have never heard of neither the developer nor the publisher of this game before I discovered Jetstream. Eli Rainsbury, there's the person who produce both the sounds and the music for this game. I do believe the game's soundtrack is uh, purchasable on Steam as well, though. It'll set you back a few extra dollars. This game is normally $10, and I think the soundtrack costs 5 And special thanks to a whole bunch of people, including Alan Hazelden. He, of course, was the developer of Sokoban, Cosmic Express, and A Good Snowman. Played all three of those games already. Ian McLarty, of course, he's the guy who made Jump Grid, Boson X, and Assembler, all three of which I covered as well. Free Life I think is an indie studio that had some of their games published by Devolver Digital, if I'm not mistaken, and I do actually want to cover them at some point, so be on the lookout for that in the future. I mean, there's plenty of other Devolver games I want to cover uh, very soon, so be, be on the lookout. Just be on the lookout. But yeah, that's Jetstream, guys. It's a nice little puzzle game, you know, just kind of flying through interdimensional portals and shape-shifting into a van because that makes complete and total sense. But that is what I meant when I said that this game has a bit of a an eccentric side to it or an eccentric element. It's Sokoban, but it's not really Sokoban. But yeah, still a neat game either way. It's also interesting that this originally began as a Lidum Dare game. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but Mini Metro originally began as a Lidum Dare game as well. Mini Metro was a lot more well-known than this, though. It was one of the bigger success stories to come out of Ludum Dare. But it's always neat whenever I see these little Ludum Dare games get developed into much bigger products and then sold on Steam. That's always really nice to see, because there's a lot of really interesting concepts and ideas that come out of Ludum Dare every year. And speaking of which, I really need to do another video where it's just dedicated to Ludum Dare games, like another randomizer video that's just dedicated to stuff coming out of Ludum Dare. I really need to try and do that again sometime soon. Also, the tapping on my window is starting to become a lot more frequent, and I'm actually getting kind of scared now. I'm fairly certain it's just June bugs messing with me, but I, I don't know, man. Something strange is going on outside right now. I also am really impressed by the fact that there's so many language options in this game, too. I mean, look at this, for goodness sakes. If you live in any of these countries, well, you can play this in your preferred language. Like with a lot of these puzzle games, there is also the option to unlock all of your progress and also reset. I don't know why, but the display options become unavailable when you have the game set to windowed mode. I'm not sure why the game was designed like this. That's a very bizarre design choice, in my opinion. If you want to stay up to date with the developments of Jetstream, like if you want to know when the iOS and Android versions are coming out, you can also sign up to the developer's mailing list from within the game itself, which is interesting. But anyway, I'm actually going to try and wrap up the video for real this time, so that is Jetstream. A neat little Sokoban-style puzzle game. I kind of feel like it's a bit on the easy side, though. I mean, there were definitely some moments where I became a little bit confused, but other than that... This game's not really that much of a challenge. It's not really, like, super complicated puzzles, and I, I don't think that was really the point anyway, because Jetstream was designed to be a, quote, frictionless experience, unquote. I don't fully understand what that actually means, but I assume it was meant to be, uh... L like, not stressful? I mean, just difficult enough that it offers you a challenge, but not, like, so intensely difficult to the point where it's rage-inducing. It definitely doesn't possess the same amount of complexity as, say, Baba is You, which is another Sokoban-esque puzzler. But upon closer inspection, I'm starting to think that perhaps that wasn't the point at all. That probably wasn't what the developers were going for in the first place, and you know what? That's fine. I do wish the puzzles were a little bit harder, but you know what? That's just me. I mean, I never claimed to like every single puzzle game that I've covered on this channel, like every single quote-unquote relaxing puzzle game. Because in my opinion, I don't think every single puzzle game is created equal. There are definitely some that are better than others. Like, for instance, I would definitely play Baba is you over Jetstream any day, but I mean, it's still a neat game either way. It's still definitely well crafted, made with care, absolutely, and apparently Tom Francis likes this game as well. Tom Francis 
Nexus, for those of you who don't know, is the developer of uh, Gunpoint and Heat Signature, and I've also covered some of his games on my channel too that aren't Gunpoint or Heat Signature. But apparently he said that he really liked this game on a podcast a few years ago, so I guess it's got that going for it at the very least. Anyway, if you're at all interested in this kind of game, then definitely go and purchase it. The link is in the description. It's only available for PC, Mac, and Linux at the moment, and when the iOS and Android versions finally come out, which supposedly they come out later this year, I will update this description with some new links, of course. For now, though, thank you guys for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video I make. Later!